Hi folks, Lotusstar here. Today we're going to be building um, a single stage to orbit space plane. I like the idea of launching vertically, so we're going to build it as a vertical launch rocket. That has a big advantage that it only has to work as a plane when the tanks are empty or close to empty. It can work as a rocket when the tanks are full. It makes the whole weight and balance thing a little easier. Now this is similar to something I, I built earlier, so I kind of know where I'm going. I think this plane should probably be called the Fat Vulture because of what it looks like. And this is KSP2. You can see the nice color scheme that's available. You can you can pick whatever main color and trim color you like. I've got this set as my agency colors, blue and gold. Well, this is kind of a cool part that's new in KSP, too. It's something you put on the back of a rocket and then you can uh, easily stick as many engines on there as you want. I haven't tried it on an upper stage. I didn't, I don't know how it compares to just forcing this in KSP-1. I'm using aerospike engines here. The, most people use uh, rapiers, uh, uh, air breathing when they're in atmosphere and so on. Um, I kind of like aerospikes. They're, um, they work well. They're rockets. They're pure rockets. They work well um, in atmosphere. They work well in, uh, in vacuum because they use the air pressure to form the bell that shapes the exhaust. So as the as you get toward vacuum, the bell gets bigger, which is what you want it to do. Wings in KSP2 are really cool. You have three sizes of them, and you can get them as a flying surface, uh, a surface with uh, uh, control surfaces on it, or just a straight fin. And then you just, you can edit everything about the about the shape of the wing. So much better than trying to piece together pieces that were not intended to piece together to get the wing shape you want. So just playing around here to, I'm going for a delta wing and I'm experimenting with exactly how to do it.
and I'm planning to put auxiliary fuel tanks out on the end, so I don't want it to come down to a point. I want a little bit of cord at the at the end of the wing to support the auxiliary fuel tanks. Nice thing about the aero spikes is they're they're short from front to back uh, in this orientation, so they don't hang out way beyond your wing and really throw off your center of mass versus your uh, versus your center of lift. And you can see their center of mass just a little ahead of the center of lift. That's where you want it for an airplane, it's where you want it for a rocket. get away with the center of mass a little further forward for a rocket. Compared to the center of lift. With an airplane you want just enough to make it nose down a little bit if you let go of the controls. I was a little disappointed that um, KSP2 doesn't seem to, to have any air brakes, which can be really useful if you're trying to glide to a landing. Set that tail pretty vertical, not much sweep, so it uh, won't interfere with the, with the ground during takeoff.
So at this point, I'm thinking of putting rapiers there. And I need some straight methane and some methyl ox. Now here's a nice feature in KSP2. You can, um, you can assemble something off to the side. If you pull something off to the side in KSP1, it just becomes uneditable. So here I've got a methyl ox tank, a methane tank. rapier engine and an air intake. So there's a little module built off to the side for an outboard rapier engine with fuel. And I can just attach it like that and it, it duplicates it. Uh, during a test launch, I had I had the idea that I would take advantage of some air breathing for launch, but uh, during test launch, I discovered the rapiers uh, really don't have enough thrust to do that. Now here I discovered something bad about KSP two. In KSP one, you you use the symmetry. You put your landing gear in the center, so it's so it's vertical, and then you pull it to the side, and it splits into two, and you get both landing gear pieces. But that doesn't work in KSP two. In KSP two, if you put it in the center, it only gives you one. So, it, minor annoyance, you have to, uh, you end up having to have your landing gear sticking off at whatever angle it's sticking off at um, due to the shape of the fuselage. And then you have to use a rotation tool to bring it back to where you want it. The main problem with this is it makes it a little harder to set the nose gear so it's at exactly the same height as the mains. Oh, and rotation and uh, rotation and translation are the same tool in KSP too. It actually works pretty well. Since we're launching vertically and the landing gear is just for landing, we don't have to worry too much about 
getting the balance right so that rotation is possible. Although I suppose I could try runway takeoff in this. So after looking at the numbers, I guess I didn't actually do a test launch with the rapiers. I looked at the thrust numbers and figured out that it wasn't going to work. Once again, building building the wingtip engine out to the side. This that may be the best feature in KSP two. And some days it just wants to fight with you. Little steering control for in space. I 
I did launch one of these earlier and it had aerodynamic controls only, got up into space and it just tumbled. The um, reaction wheels in the cockpits and capsules in KSP-2 is much weaker than in KSP-1. It's probably more realistic. Oh yeah, nose gear. Turn off auto friction. Set the friction to zero. Solves that problem with it trying to pull left and right on the runway. I also couldn't find the, um, the launch tower thingy that KSP-1 has. So we're simulating that with uh, landing gear. So this is like lunar lander landing gear on uh, on radial decouplers to hold it to take off and then we just drop it. An earlier version of this just used the landing gear, but that had the odd result of having landing gear legs hanging down off the back of the plane during landing. Still worked, it just broke off. set up for landing, for takeoff. Now I, I drained the main tanks to um, check weight and balance. And on the first launch I forgot to put the fuel back in. 
So it was flying on just the wing tanks. Which was okay. It, uh, it turned into a landing test. Got up 10,000 meters or something and did a loop back to the runway. Oh, another interesting thing in KSP-2, the, this vehicle assembly building is the only one. So you assemble your rockets and your airplanes and your rovers and your landers and everything else in the same building. All right, let's go fly it. game lagged out during this launch so I'm just going to show a little bit of the launch and then we'll we'll do the flight to orbit in a in another video So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And hope you enjoy Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Space Program 2.